Well, welcome back. Joe Biden's Justice Department has just decided to sue Georgia over its new voting reforms. Is that going to hold up in court? Let's ask legal legend Alan Dershowitz. He's a great new podcast, The Dersh Show. He's also the author of The Case Against New Censorship, Protecting Free Speech from Big Tech Progressives and Universities. Welcome, sir. I want to get right to it. What do you make of this lawsuit against Georgia? I think it will fail for the most part. It will fail when it comes to identification. The Supreme Court will hold that it's perfectly proper to demand ID uh, in order to vote absentee. It may conceivably succeed on drop boxes. It will be a mixed picture. But in the end, uh, some of the law will be upheld and maybe some of the law will be struck down. But this uh, Georgia law is not about race. This Georgia law is about getting political advantage for Republicans. Every party tries to get a political advantage when they come to power. Uh, the Democrats do the same thing. Um, it is thought that Republicans benefit when fewer blacks vote. The purpose, however, is not to get fewer blacks to vote. It's to get fewer Republicans to vote. So I don't think the Supreme Court, in the end, will look sympathetically at this challenge by the Justice Department. They'll see it as political and not racial. Yeah. Well, you know, there is a, a provision that allows the states to determine how they conduct their elections. And the, the, at the center of this focal point is the fact of voter ID. Now, Stacey Abrams, the self-proclaimed governor of Georgia, says that, you know, has said that, oh, you know, voter ID is fine. And then in another four months later says, no, 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 no vo voter ID is not fine. So, you know, do you think this is going to end up infringing on states' rights? I think voter ID is fine as long as it's easy to get voter ID and as long as voter ID laws are not used in a racially discriminatory way. And there's no allegation in this lawsuit, no proof in this lawsuit that voter ID is used uh, racially. It's If it's easy to get ID, you have to get ID to get into a building today, to get into an airplane. Why? What's wrong with requiring ID to vote? I don't see any problem with that. I think other parts of the law may pose different kinds of problems. But this is more about politics than it is about race. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to switch topics real quick. You know, a panel of Manhattan judges that was they've ju just suspended Rudy Giuliani, his his law license, because they say he made demonstrably false statements about the 2020 election in court. Will this suspension hold up, in your opinion? I do not think so. It was done without due process. He didn't have a hearing. He didn't have an opportunity to prove <clears throat> either that what he said was true or that if it wasn't true that he didn't know it. That's number one. Uh, number two, the criteria under which he was uh, essentially disbarred, because they basically said this will be permanent later on, the, the criteria is so vague. <clears throat> it says anybody who says anything to a third party that turns out not to be true, I mean, my God, there'd be no lawyers left. Right. Uh, plea bargain negotiations always involve puffing of your side, always involve exaggerations. I taught legal ethics for 35 years at Harvard. I've never seen a case like this. Yeah, it's just like taking on your political <laughs> opponents and saying, well, we're going to pull your law license. I mean, it literally is the, the, the worst kind of, of messing with the system. Now, obviously, we know why they're going after him. But why, did you think, why do you think they would take up a fight that they will probably lose? Well, they may win in the New York courts. That's possible. And then we'll have to go to the United States Supreme Court, which has discretion. So it, there's no harm doing it. Um, they do get uh, Giuliani suspended for the moment. Um, I think once there's a hearing, it'll be much harder. Um, you know, the criteria are so vague. If they went after him only for making misstatements in court, that would be one thing. But for making making misstatements to the media, the vast majority of the allegations in the decision have to do with what he said on Newsmax and Fox mm -hmm. and uh, uh, various podcasts. And if you start holding lawyers responsible for everything they said, my God, I can tell you myself from my own experience, many, many that. lawyers who have committed much, much worse uh, lies uh, right. in the public domain. And they don't go after them. This is very selective right. disbarment. Yeah, well, unfortunately, lawyers nowadays in the age of social media have to fight both the legal and the social battle. Alan Dershowitz, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.